Welcome to Encore, the show for and about Encore entrepreneurs by the Encore Entrepreneur Institute. We are here to discuss entrepreneurship for the small business. So let's get started. Welcome our special guest today, Elaine Espinola Kelts, who is Mrs. District of Columbia, America, 2015. <laughs> How are you doing today, Elaine? I am so great, Janice. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing fantastic. Well, I'm so glad you are here. We are going to be talking today about women in entrepreneurship, very close to my heart, as I am an entrepreneurial woman. And so are you, Elaine. If our live audience has any questions, please type them in the send a message box on the lower right of your screen, and we will answer them as soon as we can. So let's get started. So, Elaine, tell me a little bit about your professional background. I know you're Mrs. District of Columbia, America, which is an awesome title, so congratulations. But tell us a little bit about what it is you do. Sure. So professionally, I, I was in the pharmaceutical industry for about 10 years, and I did that until I had my children. And then I you know, chose to stop working and raise my children. And I basically found myself, as much as I chose and wanted to stay home with my children, I also had this passion and this interest and this knowledge and these skills that I wanted to utilize. So with that, I basically almost in an interest to just get out of the house because I had three, I had three under three. So while I was home all day long with my kids at night, I just felt like I need to get out of here. So I found a business with direct sales with Stella and Dot. So it is a direct sales venture. And um, I did that for a couple of years. And I think because I had such a strong background in sales, basically it came very easy to me. And I very quickly found a lot of success in that venture. I all of a sudden grew a really large team and I was going on trips to Vegas and winning this and doing that. And it was fantastic. And I did that for a while. And then I came upon a, another different direct sales venture with a cosmetics company called Unique. So I basically just started doing that. Um, I think what was easier for me was that it, it was more online versus with Stellan Dot, you're kind of going to people's houses and you're having parties and that was great at first, but it was taking a toll you know, on my family. I, I, I did it to get out of the house, but the more successful you become, the more activities you need to continue to do. So it, it was a lot. Anyway, with Unique, I, I basically do it from home. But again, very, very quickly, I, I rapidly found success. I've got a very large team. I have over 2000 ladies on my team and together we share and promote these great products to women all over the world. So I basically found a way to have my cake and eat it too. I wanted to have a business. I wanted to have a flexible entrepreneurship that I can do from the home while I still raise my kids and, I, and I've done it. And it's been lucrative, it's been fantastic. What speaks to me mainly is the opportunity to teach other women how to do the same. You know, there's women from all walks of life doing things like this. Some people just do it for a hobby. Some people are looking for a career change. Some people start as a hobby and it turns into something else. And I've seen a lot of women stop doing some sort of boring, unfulfilling job and doing this full time and, and earning a real actual full time income from it, too. And they're happy and they're fulfilled and they're able to kind of work from home. And I see a lot more women this day and age doing that, work, working for home or trying to make their career fit their lifestyle as a family person. So, no, yeah. absolutely. I got to tell you, one of my businesses early on in my, when I uh, first started having my children who are now adults, but mm -hmm. was a family daycare. And the reason I did that is so that I can raise them at home and be with them at home. I did not want to miss a moment of their growing up because they grow up so fast. So I did that mm -hmm. until my uh, youngest one was ready to go to kindergarten. So that's the thing with women, we'll do what we have to do you know, to right. make things work. And we're really creative about it. But um, talk to me a little bit about your platform, Empowerment for Women Through Entrepreneurship. What a great platform. Now, that was your platform for the Mrs. DC America pageant? That's right. So I recall when I did this pageant, and I know you and I were speaking a little bit before we started here tonight, but this was also my very first pageant. I've never done this before. And I kind of looked at it as this awesome opportunity, but I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into or what it would entail. And I recall my director said, okay, well, you know, what's your platform? What do you want to talk about? And I thought, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Do I need a platform? And I said, well, it'll probably be something along the lines of empowerment for women through entrepreneurship. And she said, well, there you go, there's your platform. And I chose that basically just based on my personal and professional experience and what I find fulfilling and what I'm passionate about. And 
also, I do believe that as a married woman, and it's a married, you know, it's a pageant for married women, mm -hmm. I felt like it was a great message to share with other women. And my message is not that every woman needs to start a business, but mainly that every woman should support other women in business, whatever it is you're doing, even if it's a nonprofit business that another woman is, is choosing to engage in. My idea is that let's get back to supporting other women, you know, um, whatever it is. I just think it's extremely important uh, for women to embrace other women, support their ventures, and the community is going to be better for it. No, that's absolutely wonderful. Now, what are some of the ways that we can support each other and, and why is it so important that we do so? Can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, of course. You know, I just think that especially as, you know, if you're going to break off on your own and be an entrepreneur, you know, word of mouth types of referrals mean everything. Um, not every small business has the advertising budget to do the things that big companies are doing. So especially in a day and age where a lot of women uh, or small businesses, men as well, are utilizing social media, I think it's critical that we support our friends and, and other women in business by sharing their information, sharing it out there, just word of mouth even, referring people. Um, and I just, I just think it's really important for any small business that you've got your tribe behind you, friends that you can really trust to give you great feedback. Again, small businesses don't have the budget to do all that marketing research, to do all these other things. You might mm -hmm. find a woman who has a skill baking cookies and she's just really good at it and she wants to start a business. And if she wants to, I, I say go for it. I say go for it and call upon your friends to have testing and call upon, upon your friends to share it out there. I mean, you know, I have three kids. They go to schools. I can talk to all the moms and all the classes and say, oh my goodness, if you're going to, if you're going to hire, you know, if you're going to get a cake for your kid's birthday party, don't go to Target. Don't go to, you know, Harris Teeter, call my friend. She has a business and she makes great cakes. And I mean, boom, she's going to have a business and it can keep going like that. And so I think it's really important for the small business owners um, to have that group of starting out as friends and then community support because it can really help their business grow. And um, I just think that it's really important. I think it's a great day and age for women to elevate themselves in the business world. You know, we're going through, a, a, I think, a big shift. I mean, we, we may have a woman, a woman in, in the president for the United States of America, and I think it's a great day and age, and I think that, um, you know, we're just going through something really cool in history where more women are taking on leadership positions in corporations, but also starting businesses, and I think it's exciting. Oh, it is exciting. So we're referrals. I like that idea. Any of our live audience have anything to contribute as far as uh, ways to support other women businesses that you've experienced, please talk about them. We'd love to hear about that and add that into our broadcast because, you know, we need to know how to support one another. I have to tell you, I am a huge advocate of women mentors for startups. I just wrote an article about it in Smart Business Online. And they said that basically the gross domestic product would even improve if we had more women businesses. And that seems kind of you know, far, far reach, but they said there's a, a huge correlation um, between a competitive market and women startup businesses. So mm -hmm. down to that, even down to uh, making the pay gap go away so that we don't mm -hmm. have men making more money than a woman in the same position because if we have more women owned businesses, of course, we're setting that salary level and we're making sure mm -hmm. that it's balanced and even for both sexes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. more women owning businesses is a very good thing. And I'm, so, if I can help do that, I want to do that. Now, are there any other ways that we can support each other that you can think of besides, um, and we have, we know we need referrals because that's awesome and mm -hmm. I, I gotta tell you in our we have a small group meets every month of entrepreneurs women and men and i tell them it's mm -hmm. so much easier to be successful if we help one another but so oh, I, I love that idea i love that idea mm -hmm. so is there anything else that you, you you can think of that we can do to support one another mm -hmm. Sure. Well, you know, in the area where I live, and I live in Northern Virginia in Loudoun County, and there are so many smart, interested women in this community. I'm so proud to be here. And there are so many networking groups. And I go to a lot of them. I mean, there are these happy hour networking groups and 
these women organize them and there might be tables of women who have their businesses and they're just sharing their information. They're basically, you know, selling to each other, they're promoting to each other. And it's really, really positive and it's really successful. Um, I mean, these are continuing, you know, continual month after month after month. I mean, even I started to wonder like, wow, is this ever going to kind of like die off? But but no, I mean, women, you know, realtors, whether they have a jewelry business, whether they're in the mortgage industry, whatever they're doing, all of these women are getting together and networking. And that's really important. So if you have a business, if you have a talent and you go ahead and, and use your skills and talents to start a business and you're starting it online, I think it's very important for you as the business person to get out there and network. Um, get your card in people's hands. Talk about your business. And that's one way. And then you know, on as the receiver, when you meet a person and they give you your card, you know, do onto others as, as you would like done to yourself. So take a look at their card, like their Facebook page. You know, social media is everything. And if you're liking their page and you're like and they're liking yours, you're just opening up both of your networks to each other and to each other's networks. And that's how things grow. My business with Unique is all online and it has it is so successful, Janice. And it's because of all the online business networking. It's because people share my posts. That's it. That's that simple. But if they weren't sharing my posts, you know, my business may not go anywhere. But I also reciprocate. I go to their pages and and it's genuine. I'm doing it because I'm interested. I'm doing it because what I think that they're offering has value. And I'm sharing it to other people. And I think of them when I see someone post a question and say, hey, does anybody know, you know, a great realtor? I'll think about some lady I just met at a networking group, you know, and I'll say, hey, I just met someone, here's her information. And I'm supporting her, I'm in referring her, I'm putting it on social media, which opens up her name. And I think, I know in my area, it happens a lot. It's very frequent. It's a really synergistic, awesome thing that's happening. And I think a lot of women in my area are seeing a lot of, success and growth in their businesses from it. So I think that's just another tip that people, you know, hopefully will continue to do all over. All right. No, that's absolutely right. I always say share to love, especially on social media. There's no better way to show that you support someone than either retweeting or sharing a post. You know, liking is nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. hit the little heart, you hit the like button. But if you reshare something, mm -hmm. uh, retweet it or share it, that mm -hmm. really means a lot. And I absolutely on Twitter, I will follow anyone who retweets anything that mm -hmm. I put out because that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. So if I mm -hmm. see that you did that, you know, I'm definitely you're going to see that I'm following you shortly after. I don't have a problem with that at all. You know, there's something that as a small business owner, if you're going to utilize social media, and I highly recommend you do as, as an entrepreneur and a business owner, there are things that you can Google and there are little seminars, online seminars that you can take to understand how to take advantage of Instagram, of Pinterest, of Facebook, of Twitter. Because if you're not familiar, there are certain algorithms that, for example, people don't realize it's one thing to like something on Facebook. It's another thing to comment, right? Mm -hmm. Apparently when you comment, it kind of opens up that post to X amount of other people. So there are all these little different algorithms and it's just as simple as educating yourself. And when you do as a small business owner, then you're going to take your business from here to here just by following certain different little tips that you can do on social media. No, that's a good point. And Facebook is being uh, really tight with sharing your posts from a business page now so they, because they want you to pay to promote it. So you're right. If they comment on it, they share it. It really does help out a small business because you know, you can only afford to do so many of those a year, you know, as a small business, they start to add up. They're, they're, you know, they're cheap to do one here, one there. But once you start doing them for almost every post, that can really add up and it'll make Facebook rich. But the poor small mm -hmm. business is, is suffering comes out of their bottom line. So that those are good tips. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Now, what things have you been able to do to support your platform this year? Because it's such a great platform. Yeah, well, thank you so much. So you know, this year has been incredible and I've been able to do things like I've been asked to speak a lot and I love that. I, I love that opportunity. So I've spoken with different women's groups, different youth groups. I've spoken at different high schools about both entrepreneurship and things that people can do, business networking. Actually, my, my platform started out kind of long and we had to trim it down, but it was empowerment for women through business networking and entrepreneurship because that was just a huge part of what I think 
makes being a business owner uh, work. So I, but I do talk a lot when I give some some talks about business networking and how to do it and what to do. Um, I've also talked to people just about things like confidence and things like that because I think that makes a person help um, even grow their business, quite frankly. You know, when they're a little bit more confident about who they are, what they have to offer, then they can go about selling and, and pitching their business to other people with confidence, and that's important too. Um, I've also um, attended a lot of launches for friends in the area or people who have asked for me to attend their launches. And, you know, anytime you have someone saying, absolutely, I'd be happy to support your, your new business open. Let me go. Let me invite my network. So I've done a lot of that this year. Um, specifically, I'm always happy to do it for, for small business women owners. So I've been doing that a lot this year. Oh, that sounds great. Now, do you have a favorite uh, event or appearance that stands out uh, as something that was amazing for you or amazing yeah. experience? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. So again, in the area where I live, there's um, there are plenty of networking events that I have gone to. Um, one of one is called the Real Housewives of Northern Virginia, and they host a monthly event every year where they have tables. And I've gone, I've worn the sash, and and all of that, and I've kind of met with all the business owners, and I'm just talking with them about their businesses and just getting to know them and and trying to again help refer and promote and get to know people. Uh, there's another one called the High Heeled Happy Hour, which is here in Northern Virginia. What I like about this one is that it is attached to a charity. So it's really fun because the whole idea is that you're gonna wear your best high heels and they give mm -hmm. out prizes for the best high heels, so it's fun. But there's also right. a nonprofit beneficiary and, and I love that. Um, I'm actually hosting one the uh, High Heeled Happy Hour in April and as the host, I get to choose the nonprofit beneficiary of my choice. And I have chosen Northern Virginia Human Trafficking Initiative. And so a portion of the proceeds from this event will go to um, that nonprofit. So I love that because it's just a great way for women to get together, you know, get out of the house, network for business purposes, but also give back to a charity. And I love that. So I've been doing that a lot this year as well. What a fantastic idea. I don't know who came up with that name, but that yeah. is, I can see how that can catch on really fast. That's going to be very oh, successful. Okay. I yeah. love it. I love it. It is. And it's, okay. also, it's so much fun. I mean, you're getting dressed up, you're wearing your beautiful yes. heels, <laughs> you know, and then it's all for fun and philanthropy and for business. It's great. Yeah, that sounds great. I can, like I said, I can see it catching on. And so that's pretty, pretty cool. What message would you share with any woman looking to recharge, refocus, or re-enter the working world? Because you said it's not mm -hmm. always, you know, you, you want them to support working uh, entrepreneurial women, but you're also talking about working women here too that can be part of, of this whole platform. So how would you uh, advise women who are looking to do that, recharge, refocus, and, and re-enter the working world, especially if they're becoming a new mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say one of the biggest things is to just put yourself out there. I know that um, you know I've gone through different phases of my life where I was a corporate work uh, working woman, and then I was a mom, and then I was a stay at home mom, and then I found myself re-entering the the workforce in a different way. And I would say one of the biggest things is just. I mean, this might sound sort of just cliche and flighty, but just go for it. Go for it. If you have an idea that you want to get out there, start talking about it. Talk to anybody who will listen. If you are interested in even, you know, um, as a young mom, for example, you know, oftentimes you find yourself overwhelmed. You're in the house. You're not seeing people. You're with this baby that you love and you adore, but you're sort of losing yourself a little bit. And, and I mean, I, I know I, I've talked to plenty of women and I was there. And I think one of the biggest things is to um, maintain connections with people. Get out there. Join moms groups. You know, those are where some of the biggest ideas come. You're sitting around with other moms going, well, gosh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if you had this kind of creation for a child? And boom, <laughs> you've got an idea and you've got a bunch of women who are, who are there talking about it as well with you. So I really think it's all about the connections, getting involved, recharging, refocusing by, you know, just getting feedback from anybody at all that will listen, your husband, your friends, um, go to seminars if you're interested. Just get involved. You know, I, I think we all have different personalities. I tend to be, you know, a go-getter. I'm, I'm, I'm out there. I'm not afraid to just reach out. I'll go to a seminar all by myself. It's not a big deal. I like it. Not everybody's like that. Um, but I think if you have that interest, you know, if you find yourself thinking, 
I want to change directions in my career, or I want to take my career to the next level, or, you know, I really just wish I had some, some, um, you know, friends that I could talk to about this kind of stuff. You have to get out of your comfort zone and, and make that effort. So it's just about finding friends, finding people, like-minded people and making those connections. Oh yeah, and you never know what connections might happen. I talked to one entrepreneur and while on vacation at the pool swim up bar, she met another woman and mm -hmm. they start talking about their kids and how they wish they had like a, a travel kit with mm -hmm. just activities for the kids to do, like they could just purchase. And they decided to do it themselves and make these travel kits and these little backpacks that mm -hmm. they could just you know, just buy with different themes in them. And so if you're, you're going on vacation, you can surprise your kid with these new backpacks that they've never mm -hmm. seen before with a bunch of activities from coloring to games, everything to keep them busy. And they're all different themes. So they decided to do it and they just met each other. You I love never it. know. You never know. And is going I love that. If you can think it, you can create it. And where there's a will, there is a way. You may not have the funding right away. You may not have all the ideas in place. But if you just have this creative idea and you share it with another person, that's what I mean. You just create this connection and you never know what can happen. Great things can happen. Uh -huh. All right. Exactly. Exactly. I know for me, I get my best ideas when I'm at the gym alone by myself on elliptical. People see me. I'm using my cell phone trying to write it down so I don't forget it. Yeah. And I probably think I'm texting one, but I'm like, yeah. idea number one. You know, so, yeah. you know, just yeah. get yourself out there, meet with people. If you can get alone time, I think that's a great idea, too, because that's when I know I think my best. If you're always around the kids and then you're at work or you're working yeah. on your business constantly, you got to free your mind to let those mm -hmm. ideas flow. So you know, I, it, meeting with other people definitely helps that as well. I think it, it helps to nurture it. Mm -hmm. So, and that, you know what, um, here's just one more thing. I have a really great girlfriend of mine and you know, I'm doing my thing. She's doing her thing. She started a business and, um, we started out as mommy friends when neither of us were doing either of this. We were just mommy friends on the playground. And here we are five years later doing our separate things. And every time we get together, I say, Kim, I thought of this idea for you. You should totally do this with your business. And she'll say, I thought of some things for you, or I met someone and I brought your name up. And we decided, my girlfriend and I, we're going to meet once a week and we're See just going to be each other's sounding boards. We're going to be each other's kind of mentors. I mean, some people pay for that kind of consultation, but guess what? Yes. She's a bright woman. I'm a bright woman. I've got creative ideas and so does she. And we're going to, we're going to do that together. And so we've decided we're going to do that on a weekly basis. And it just helps get those creative ideas going and it helps kind of, you know, bounce ideas off of each other. No, you are each other's mastermind group. Basically, you're you're each other's board of advisors. So that's perfect. I highly recommend doing that. And, you know, because you, you, she'll think of things that you'll never think of or you might take you a while to think of because you're busy and she'll and you'll do the same thing for her. So if you can have that type of relationship or, mm -hmm. in, in, or even create it, because I tell people if there's meetup.com. You can create it if you don't know of anyone. So, yeah, master, little, you have your little mastermind group. I just love that idea. So I'm glad that you have that. Yeah, that's definitely helpful. And it shows um, statistics show that that having that kind of support, which they call mastermind support, basically gives you more of an opportunity to be successful. So you will actually experience more success with that kind of support than without it. So awesome. Congratulations <laughs> on that. <laughs> that's going to be very, very good for your business. Now, do you have any advice for women who are maybe working full time now and might want to start a business, but they might be hesitant because of family obligations or financing. Um, what motivation sure. and advice could you give to her? You know, for a woman who's currently in the corporate world and, and she might be in that because maybe she needs that income. Maybe she enjoys that career. Maybe, maybe that's just the path that she has been on. But if she's considering maybe changing and starting a business, you know, I, I would just recommend well, you know, I think it depends on the woman. You know, I think how far she is in that process of wanting to start a business and if she has the means to do it, she's either mm -hmm. gonna go big and if she's not in the, that opportunity, I say maybe start small. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the direct sales industry and the reason for that is, um, I believe it is, is still an entrepreneurship. You know, you're not working for that company. You work for yourself. I don't owe anybody anything and I can stop as, whenever I want and I can do as much as I want. What I like about it is that, you know, it allows 
someone the opportunity to start a business without all of the overhead. You know, it's a direct sales venture and you might pay into it, but you're not paying for the distribution. You're not paying for the products. You're not paying for the research and the development. It's all there. And if you can find something that you're passionate in that you can share, then you can grow a business without having to do all of that administrative stuff on the back end. And then you can learn a lot from the process. You can network and you can grow, you know, your base of people who trust you and believe in you. And then when and if you will find yourself in the right time and the right opportunity to break off then on your own, you will have learned a great deal from that experience. You will have net networked yourself a lot. Um, so I, I think that might be a great place for someone to start who is currently working corporately and interested in doing something out there. There are so many businesses out there that you can partake in. I mean, the difference is it's not something you've created on your own, but at least it's, it's a start to get yourself started. Um, I always say there's such little risk and such huge reward. I mean, you know, you can start a business online, pay yourself back. And after that, it's just all commission. And when you are ready to stop, stop. You know, if it grows into something humongous, then that's great too. So um, that's one place that someone can start. No, that's excellent advice. Now, a few minutes left, but I want to ask you, because you, you're a unique representative. So how do you manage like to keep your sales going. You have a nice um, group of women that are selling with you. How do you keep it fresh? For, so for instance, like when a market starts to saturate and you start to have a lot of reps all over the place selling it, that can you give some tips? Because like I know Avon started that way. Um, we have Unique. Now we have the, um, I forget what's the name of the, the cream for your face to keep the wrinkles away. Uh, yeah. But you have all these representatives that I you know I know bombard me a lot of times on Facebook but how do you mm -hmm. keep it fresh so you can stay successful do you have a few tips about that so if someone's thinking about going into that type of direct sales sure. that yeah. you can help them absolutely Janice that is a great question because that is very true the uh, the market can get very saturated and I myself get these emails left and right do you want to do this do you want this body wrap you want this mm -hmm. and you know I didn't want the first time I don't want it 700 times <laughs> and that's okay and some people may feel the same way about unique and that's okay my tips for being successful and keeping it fresh and keeping your business moving along is very simple really my tip for that is being passionate positive and genuine. Um, I think that if you can do that, then I'm sharing something that is amazing for me. I mean, I'm just really good at saying, you know, this is the best thing I've ever had. You know, I, I talk about it with such passion that there might be 55 other women saying, oh, have you tried this lipstick? But the way that I'm bringing it out and the energy and the passion behind it is so real. Um, I, I really have to think that that is what has made me so successful and made other women so successful too. Um, I mean, anybody can talk about, you know, any product, but if you're not doing it sincerely and, and that comes across, that will come across if you're not doing it with your whole heart and soul. And in that case, don't do it. You know what I mean? If you're going to do something, do it. You know, if it doesn't matter if you have a direct sales business with Avon unique, it works this, or if you happen to own your very own makeup line, if you are not talking about it from a place of pure, genuine passion, your business is going to go flat. You know what I mean? And I think that you just need to keep on being creative and genuine. The second your heart's not in it, your business is going to go flat. It's that simple. Um, you know, I really just think that's the case. It's just about um, really loving and having the passion for what you're doing. I think well, that's that, the difference between people who really make it in those industries and people that don't. I agree a hundred percent. And that's with any entrepreneurial uh, type of venture, because if you, the path keeps you going, especially when there's no money being made at that moment. Uh, it keeps you going so that you can get to that next moment where you're actually making money. So it's the passion that's that right. keeps you going. So I just you know, wanna, a lot of people go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. No, finish, finish. I was going to say, you know, a lot of people who start any business, whether it's direct sales, your own business, you start working for a company, whatever it is, you know, especially sales, you know, you're putting this energy in and you're reaching out and you're reaching out and you're not seeing any success or people aren't responding and people get um, uh, disenfranchised. They get discouraged and then they think it's not working and then they get hard on themselves. And that's when you see people drop out, 
that's when you see people fall off, you know, with the direct sales or, you know, maybe you had this great idea for a business and you kind of started it and you put it out there and nothing happened and it fell off. Maybe you started a restaurant and no one was coming for the first couple months. And of course, I know there's real bills to pay with that. But I guess my point is you have to be persistent and passionate. Um, and it just makes all the difference. It really makes all the difference in getting you over that hump of X amount of times promoting something and nothing happening. Like you said, in the beginning, there's not always, the money's not going to come. It takes a long time to develop that trust with people. Um, so. No, oh, wow. What a great amount of advice you just gave us with everything. <laughs> I want to thank you, Elaine, for coming on Encore, the show for entrepreneurs. So we're going to end the show now because you know, we're out of time. But join us this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as I will be interviewing Carrie Gorman. She is the executive vice president and head of small business bank at Capital One Spark, Biz Spark, sorry, Spark Business on small business trends, uh, especially in the area of raising capital. So if you're looking to raise money for your business, you're going to want to tune in to Carrie Goman. And this is just a show you're not going to want to miss because she will have lots of valuable information about small business trends that you don't want to miss, as well as how to find capital for your company. And please don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Encore Institute on Blab and you at Mrs. DC America, or is it, oh, sorry, at Elaine, is it M Espinola? You can see it on your tag there. Is that your Twitter there that you use or do you have a different one that you want them to follow the lane? Oh, I think we you're frozen the lane. Somehow you just froze at the end of the show, but that's OK. And one last thing, if you could all just tweet out one more time by clicking the little bird to the left of your screen, it will alert your followers about the replay of this interview. And that way they will uh, also follow in. So let me open that. And we will retweet. And we are done recording.